Hello, guys. Greetings. You are welcome to join our webinar about uh, uh, body metric survey. Uh, we will wait while uh, everybody will join us and we will start our new webinar. Today, I would like to, to say that um, uh, uh, we invited our uh, user and our friend, Raman uh, Kirsanov from Aurelius Group from Israel, to join our webinar and to describe how he use our equipment in a real survey work. Uh, as you know, Raman uh, is a professional surveyor, and he use uh, different he uses different kind of uh, survey uh, lidar equipment, uh, photogrammetry equipment. He uses a lot of drones, and he's a professional pilot. And right now, uh, he will share information how to use bathymetric equipment together with the drone to uh, how to get. It. Um, accurate results, how to make a bathymetric survey. So he will share his, uh, his uh, experience. And I think it will be very interesting for, 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 for everybody. Raman? Yes, thank you for the presentation and opportunity to, to share my experience. Uh, actually, we're just not talking about the bathymetric, but also the other stuff, because we are have the long let's say wide range of equipment uh production of top drone and uh, it will be pleasure for me to share one of our job that we did in uh, israel uh, on the water storage and of course if you have any questions uh, you may ask uh, in the q, q a uh, section and uh, we will answer uh, all your questions during our presentation or after the presentations and uh, of course, uh, you are welcome to uh, ask as many questions as you want. Uh, it's uh, very important for us to get real feedback for our users and for everybody who is interested in uh, in bathymetric survey using of drone. Um, so we will wait several minutes, and while we are um, we are waiting for participants, um, I would like to uh, ask the first question: How many users? Uh, use uh, drone equipment for bathymetric survey. If, you, if, if anybody has, uh, has experience of using bathymetric equipment for, with the drone for, for lake survey, for river survey, or for sea survey, just share, uh, share and send the message in the chat or in, in the Q&A uh, section. And of course, uh, one uh, one of our participants, he, uh, Albert, uh, uh, he's asking if it is possible to share video of, of our presentation. Of course, uh, this video will be uh, recorded, and of course, our, all our webinar will, will be available to to watch on our YouTube channel. So I think we will start. And uh, first of all, I, I would like to make a short presentation about aqua mapper equipment. And I would like to make a short intro introduction about Tapadron company. And I will, uh, I will start my presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. And I, I will be happy to answer you. OK, I will start my presentation. And uh, let's go. So as you know, Tapa drone produces different kind of uh, survey equipment. We have a wide range of uh, survey equipment which is related uh, for the drone. We have a wide range of payload which can be installed on the drone for high precision survey and mapping. We started from uh, easy to use and very affordable PPK uh, uh, models which can be installed on any type of DJI drones or outer level drones. After that, we designed and developed uh, a wide range of LiDAR systems. Right now, these LiDAR systems are widely used all over the world, and we have a different kind of LiDAR systems with a different kind of uh, efficiency, accuracy, uh, with a different uh, price level. And I would say that uh, this, uh, I would say that it is very popular solution right now all over the world, and all our LiDAR systems can be installed not only on a DJI drones, but can be installed on different kind of VTOLs, or even on the car, on, on the backpack, and during uh, 
future um, uh, presentation, for example, in GeoWeek, we will take part in GeoWeek uh, within a few weeks. We will show you, uh, we will uh, take part in GeoWeek in Denver, and we will show all range of our equipment. But I would like to, uh, to represent and I would like to show the newest our development. And I think it's a game changer in bathymetric survey. So uh, we spent several, um, we spent approximately one year to develop uh, and to, to design and to create and to produce a new level of bathymetric equipment. It's aquamapper. What does it mean aquamapper? Aquamapper is a, uh, uh, is a solution which is compatible with the DJI Matrix 300 drone. And uh, it combines uh, echo sounder, it combines GNSS receiver, inertial measurement unit, different types of inertial measurement units. And all, all together provides a good accuracy and all together provides possibility to process data. Uh, and uh, all this equipment is allow us to move uh, uh, very fast in the water. So uh, the equipment has a uh, line streamed uh, uh, shape, which allows us to move in the water with, with very high speed. Um, Aquamapper allows to fly and allows uh, to carry the payload in the water with a speed up to 14 kilometers per hour. It is comparable with the speed of boat, but uh, the, the price of this equipment is uh, several times less, and you don't need to pay for the fuel, you don't need to pay for the permission to drive the boat, and you don't need to bring the boat in your area. What you need, you need just to bring your Matrix 300 drone, and if you have all other equipment like uh, LiDAR systems and photogrammetry systems, you can use the same systems on your DJI Matrix 300. At the same time, if you have any requirements to make bathymetric survey over, the, over rivers, lakes, or uh, in the uh, shallow water in the sea, in this case, you can use our aquamapper. And as I already said, inside of aquamapper, we realized all our technology which, is, which was designed for LiDAR equipment. So uh, it allows us to move, uh, to move the sensor in very fast mode in the, in the water, and it allows us to process the data. And it doesn't matter if the, if the sensor has any inclination or move on, or jumps on the waves, it will process data, it will provide a good accuracy. And of course, we try to design it in very lightweight shape, and it's very easy to use. And today we will show you how to use this equipment, how to process the data. And of course, uh, we are, uh, you are welcome to ask any questions. And uh, as I already said, inside of Aquamapper, there is a Genesis receiver, Genesis antenna, national measurement unit to measure inclination of the sensor, uh, to measure uh, velocity of the sensor, and there is an echo sounder. Right now, we use just uh, one beam echo sounder, but in the future, we will develop a new solution uh, for multi beam or any other uh, sensors can be implemented inside of this uh, uh, streamlined shape. And uh, the combination of this uh, equipment allows us, uh, and the combination of this hardware allows us to, uh, to measure everything uh, under the water. And we will collect the data, and we, we need to post process data after the flight to get accurate results. And um, of course, as a carrier, uh, we use Mat DJI Matrix 300 drone. And uh, in order to allow the drone to fly on the same uh, level under the water, uh, we use uh, equipment from our partner, UGCS SkyHub, uh, with the ter true terrain falling mode, which allows us to, to keep the drone in automatic way under the same level under the water. And you can uh, fly uh, within, uh, in, in altitude of two meters under the water, and you should, and and you, you will be 100% sure the drone will, will stay on the same altitude, will keep the same altitude due, due to the using of uh, altimeter, which is installed uh, in the front of the drone. And um, uh, today we will share several, uh, uh, several, um, uh, we will share, we will share uh, several results of data processing. First of all, I would like uh, to invite uh, Roman to show the real results of survey in Israel, where, where uh, he, um, uh, he surveyed over the uh, reservoir with uh, uh, floating uh, solar panels. And I think uh, this issue, this uh, trend is very important in the world. Right now, 
uh, a lot of countries uh, um, in uh, a lot of countries uh, wants to install uh, uh, solar panels on the water, especially in a, in a shallow water or in reservoirs in the lakes to avoid uh, paying for, uh, for, the, uh, for the terrain. And it's possible to install a huge area of uh, uh, solar panels in the water. And Roman, could you, uh, could you start your presentation? Yeah. Let's start my presentation. I will share my screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, as I said, thank you again, Maxim, for uh, inviting me <laughs> and give me this opportunity to share uh, my little experience with the, using this uh, um, equipment. Um, we start to do this job, bathymetric job in Israel, I think uh, something around two years ago, because uh, also awareness of the market for this type of the technology are quite low. For, uh, for example, we doing a few jobs uh, also with the UGCS uh, software and the equipment. Okay, this is we start to do uh, our jobs um, uh, by, produced by SPH Engineering. Um, but uh, during our experience, we understand that we need uh, to, um, to make our productivity more larger because to with the speed of 0 0.7 meter, it's a little bit problematic to do the job, especially in C. Okay, the about the water storages area, it's a special market segment, okay, that we are now making more and more job in Israel uh, and making the, the clients aware about the technology and um, the great, um, uh, the great, let's say, um, profit of these jobs, okay, that could save your time, could save your uh, resources, okay, it's very easy to use the drone, okay, instead to deal with all this uh, logistic chain to bring the, the boat and to do these kind of jobs, okay, so now we are talking about the application scenario for bathymetric survey, water storage basins using the aqua mapper, okay. Um, le, I, the equipment that we use, okay, it was used the Aquamapper itself, Topodron 61 megapixel, the new camera, okay, and the LiDAR uh, 100 light IRES. Uh, it's very important to mention that uh, the workflow itself, uh, again, based on our experience, uh, require us to make orthophoto of uh, of the objects in order to see the every kind of obstacles in water because it's especially in the water storages it's a lot of objects on the water or it's kind of some pumps or if we're talking about the the water storage is that uh, making some uh, integration and the uh, installation of the solar panels. You have, uh, we have a lot of uh, cables inside the water that can also damage the equipment, okay? And make the process not possible, okay? So the, the idea was to make the orthophoto, actual orthophoto of the, the special reservoir. It's a reservoir in the north of Israel. Uh, and also uh, to analyze the water level, okay? Because uh, the reservoirs in Israel uh, required uh, for the bathymetric survey um, when probably they make the cleaning process, okay? The dredging. So before, uh, to make this uh, dredging uh, process, they need to survey in order to understand the, the actual level of sediments, okay? And then it's installation of the power solar panels, etc., etc. So um, 
we did first of all the photogrammetry uh, work on this uh, area. Uh, after all, we also using the LiDAR data that probably the usage of the LiDAR data uh, and LiDAR itself, uh, it's allowed us to get the, let's say, full complex uh, package of uh, geo data on these special objects. If it's uh, sub bottom or uh, about the LiDAR data, we can uh, get also from the airborne solution. Okay. And then I will show after how we can um, combine this data and to get probably the very nice results. So the usage of the LiDAR data, it's very important to mention this because if you can see, this solar panel, floated solar panel, are um, uh, anchored with uh, special cables. That these cables we can identify by aerial mapping, and also by lidar you can see the the cables outside the water, and then it's allowed us to build the the road for the drone as accurate as possible and of course to understand and to analyze where we need to to relocate to jump over and when we need required for uh, operation uh, operator uh, interference in the process but in 85 percent it's uh, going completely automatic so the lot of LiDAR data, and then it's execution stage. You can see <laughs> these floating uh, solar panels on the water. And as I said, there is a lot of equipment in the water area, okay? You can see installation of the base station and our team. And the uh, echo sounder data processing. So in echo sounder data processing, we're using the Hydramagic uh, software. It's a very user-friendly uh, software. Uh, in this software, uh, allowed us to make, and of course, to make the special correction of raw echo data and uh, to export the sounding points or uh, that we did, okay, with our co mapper to build the counter lines, to build the uh, the special matrix, okay, with the different type of uh, density. And uh, of course, the, especially in this, uh, in this case, we was supposed to provide the calculation of sediment, okay. In order to do the calculation of sediment, we was supposed to get from client, uh, the zero, the zero level. Okay, now it's very tricky because most of the uh, water storages are built 30, 25 years ago, and it's very hard. It's also to find. It was surprise for us to find also some as made data. So probably we get this data from the client. This is the best data what we can get with the 15 points just 50 point probably was sampled with the boat so for this area you understand that it's very tricky to triangulate and to build the, the normal um the surface but we was supposed to play with what we have um so this is about the echo sounder data processing um of course this is the data finalization and combination with lidar 360 software and hydromagic so this is what i I mentioned before that we can take the data collected by the, uh, the Aquamapper, export it to the point cloud, and then to merge it together with the data produced by LiDAR. Okay, of course, after the noise filtering and uh, all necessary filters uh, that uh, we need to apply and to export, of course, the, the ground points. And then you can see this is the the ground points, uh, the, the the point cloud RGB of ground points. And this is the final result, okay, the, that we build the contour lines. Uh, so this is what I mentioned before. It's we get complete data, okay, it doesn't matter if it's outside the water, inside the water of the um, DTM. 
Um, and then, of course, the final reporting, uh, we did also some, um, some calculation of the, of the surfaces and the calculation of the, the quantities. Um, it's also very, very uh, easy to make uh, in HydroMagic software. Uh, by the way, we did some comparison between the HydroMagic and the most popular AutoCAD software. The data are same. Okay, the calculation of the survey of the quantities are same. You can see also in the software you can build cross section. Okay, and to see the 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 actual level in the cross section view. Okay, and of course, for each cross section, it's very good reporting about the, the quantity itself. And of course, um, the full data and the picture. This is the, um, the matrix that we create from the client has made. And this is the data what we get from our uh, survey with the aquamatter. So the mission itself uh, took for us something about four hours. Uh, from the from the moment that we arrive on site, spread the control points um, four hours. So we did this job, and probably three four hours uh, on the on office job. And uh, I think it's quite good result. Okay, and the high productivity. Uh, and the, this is the example of what I wanted to share. Okay, okay super. Uh, Roman, thank you for sharing your experience. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great job. And I would like to ask from the beginning, why you, why you have chosen uh, AquaMapper equipment? Why you don't just uh, bring uh, uh, just uh, any type of boat? And uh, I, I, I just wondering why you need to spend so, a huge amount of money, around 20,000. And why you you are going to use Matrix 300 as well? So what uh, what is your well, opinion? Why why are you cho uh, choosing this? So first of all, like you mentioned the, before, the price of the boat, okay, even the small boats, because we're working with the one company in Israel uh, in the survey of the shoreline. Uh, this company have uh, three or four boats, okay, and. Uh, the issue of boat itself, it's very tricky for this company because just imagine you need to take the boat from the port, okay, and to travel all the way to the point that you need to make the survey. With the drone, okay, you don't have this problem, okay, you coming, okay, you're supposed to be just with the visual contact, okay, with the survey area. 15 minutes of the preparation, okay, installation of the base, um, and you're good to go. Okay, the second reason, uh, of course, with the aquamapper, uh, with this speed of 3, 2.5 meter per second, we are uh, we're really making the competition to the boats because with this kind, with this uh, value of speed, we are making the very good, uh, very good recover, very good, um, very great areas. Huge the, area. And yes. uh, if we, we speak in, in kilometers, how long is the way of uh, aquamapper? How long is it possible to, to make a survey for, for, for one line? For example, one kilometer, 500 meters, so more. Okay. So uh, from your experience. For our, you know, we did some job in the uh, nearby the Natania in the middle of Israel. So the our the range that we was supposed to travel from the sea, from the, the from the shore to the sea, it was five hundred meters. Five hundred meters. It's depend about the client demand for density of the lines. Okay, mm -hmm. the density of the lines demanded by client was twenty. Uh, every 20 meters. The long, um, the, the area of the project was two kilometers by 500 meters. So this job took for us, of course, with the changing of the batteries, because uh, our team have six uh, sets of the battery, okay, with the, opportunity, with the possibility to recharge them on site. Uh, we finished the job in six hours. 
And what is the, uh, what is the time flight uh, uh, of Patris 300 uh, with uh, Aqua Mapper on board? The, the best value that we get is something around 20 minutes. Some but. And what is the distance of uh, uh, which you can cover in 20 minutes? Uh, what is the distance? The distance itself. Uh, you ask me for the meter because uh, no, just the uh, distance in kilometers, like one kilometer we can cover or two and a half kilometers. With uh, one battery, it's again, it's depend from the density of the lines, but uh, you can cover uh, 400, 500 meter. Or... It's a, a distance of the area, but I am talking about just uh, the lines. Uh, about profile. the one, about the, uh, no, the travel. Yeah, the travel the traveled area, I think it was about almost two kilometers. I think. Two kilometers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, approximately the same which we tested here in Switzerland. Yeah, two and the maximum two and a half. But in reality, you can uh, you can cover two two kilometers of profiles. It means that uh, uh, it's a very long uh, long line, and you can cover a huge area if you fly in the lake. So if you or, uh, if you need to make a bathymetric uh, survey in the river. And today we will show another one project which was made recently here in uh, Switzerland. We make a survey for one lake which is close to our office, and the total area of our survey was forty four um, hectares. And I would like to show it again uh, after a few minutes and some more questions. Roman, what do you think about Matris 300? How it is stable under the water? Is there any dangerous to fly under the water with uh, with a drone? What do you think? It's, Don't uh, say under the water. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, above the water. Sorry, uh, quite good. <laughs> the, the issue of the, the Matris 300, it's quite good machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, we're talking about the, um, the special equipment of the SPH engineering. Okay. Ah, uh, you're talking about, talking about uh, altimeter sensor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, true terrain falling. It's an yes. amazing thing, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. When you fly in automatic mode under the same level of the water and you don't need to touch any, any remote control and so on, it works totally automatically. It's amazing. You need to test it, really. It's a genius thing. Uh, greetings to our friend. Uh, yeah, Alexei, if Alexei. you see us, uh, <laughs> um, it's, we are happy about this solution, really. Yes. Uh, so it's uh, very stable, okay? Uh, but uh, according to our test, there is a limitation of speed because the probably aquamatter can go, okay, can travel with a much higher speed of about the five, uh, meter per second uh, as we test with the uh, MATLAB, okay? Because of the streamlined shape, which was specially designed, uh, especially designed for this kind of sensor. There is no any solution in the world right now which can uh, which can drive, so which can uh, swim in the water in, in the same speed uh, with the drone. I think there is no other solution. I didn't see it. I haven't seen it. In the world right now. At this time, no, but after the your uh, presentation at the interview, mm -hmm. I don't know what will be situation yeah. next week. Yeah, yes, next week. Yeah. But um, with the Matrix 300, we reach the point at uh, the speed of three meter per second. Okay, above that's again it's very um, depend from the weather. Okay, because probably the marine projects we are prefer to do at uh, night. First of all, you don't have any unwanted uh, people. Okay, uh, and we have the illumination system equipped on the drone. Okay, and you know we are working quite uh, surrounding just with the lights, uh, with onboard lights of yes. the drone, and, and you can during, see it in the in the night. Uh, yeah, easily. during the night. Yeah. You have the FPV camera, and you, during the night you have the the change wind um, uh, period that uh, probably the sea became as uh, flat, okay, yeah. very flat. And then you can boost your and this is uh, very important to catch this uh, period and um, to 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 produce more jump. Uh, so uh, and this condition we reach the speed of three meter per second, okay, above. The, the in resolution. kilometers, three meters per second, it's uh, multiplied by 3.6. So uh, it's about the 12. 12 uh, kilometers per hour. I think it's uh, uh, comparable with the uh, speed of the boats, even, uh, little even a little bit higher. Depends. So efficiency is, is a little bit higher than uh, the boats, I think. 
the brand which the brand, bottle, which bottle which yes, yes so yeah, exactly it's a, it's a exactly. single being it's a, it's yeah there is a lot there of, are a lot of fish. Yeah, it's a lot of, of type of, of very uh very expensive equipment okay so exactly because uh, we are working with the single beam in one okay it's, it's, you, it's you will very lightweight solution it's very lightweight solution and one more question final question and i will start the ne next part of the presentation are you afraid to fly together with matrix 300 and with aqua mapper if what has happened if Matrix 300 will be damaged or there is a crash to the water what uh, what do you think you will lose money or what First of all, we don't want to think, yes, but we're supposed to have some risk uh, analysis, okay? And by the way, this is the one of the, for my company, okay, uh, that we testing and choosing the pilot for this system very accurate, okay? Because it's supposed to be the pilots that, you know, that not just guys with the certificate, okay? Yeah, it's it should be very skilled guy. guy. Uh, it's yeah, supposed exactly. to be very skilled guys. Exactly. Yeah. So, and probably about the the mattress three hundred itself, there is a possibility to work also with the damaged uh, rotor, okay, mm -hmm. and to land it. And about um, uh, DJI Care, did you test it? With DJI Care Enterprise. DJI Care in Israel, it's a little bit tricky. I know in Europe. Uh, yeah, uh, in Europe, Europe is not As soon as yes. we are official DJI reseller, enterprise reseller, I would say that all Matrix 300, which is sold from us, are covered by DJI Care uh, uh, insurance. So if you damage the drone, if the drone uh, crashes in the water, it doesn't matter. Um, um, the new drone will be sent it to you just for seven hundred dollars or something like that. So in US, uh, in Israel, in uh, in Europe, you can find the DJI Enterprise Care product. In this case, if something happens, you can get a new one drone. And of course, we we are designing special solution just to uh, just to uh, break uh, just to break a line between the drone and uh, between Aquamaker if something happens. For example, if we catch a net. In the, in the water, there are some situations, of course, and everybody asking what can happen if we catch something uh, in the water. And we are designing a special solution just to broke on the line between uh, uh, between the drone and aqua mapper, which helps to drone rise in the, in the sky. And aqua mapper uh, will be in the water, and you will catch it. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, yeah. So, uh, and also, if we, uh, I want to add something, it's also yeah. very important. Important, okay, to to make the 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 um, uh, right approach for this kind of mission okay and the execution of the photogrammetry it's a part of our yeah, risk exactly. assessment okay in order to not to get to this situation okay and uh, because you know as our policy in the company first of all we are talk uh, we are uh, caring about the safety safety and exactly. uh, safety to the surroundings, safe, safety of the equipment, and safety of our job. Okay. Yeah, because... and what I would like to show right now, it's a new project which we just performed several days ago. And the aim of this project was to show the total all steps of data processing workflow, all steps of data capturing workflow, how to prepare data, how to prepare mission for fly, how to avoid any accidents and i would like to share uh, the second part of my presentation and if you have any question i will answer after this presentation if you don't mind so uh, so and i would like to share uh uh, the project which was made over the lake, uh, the project of bathymetry survey over over uh, La Dubre. It's close to our office, within several kilometers. And right now in Switzerland, it's uh, uh, the weather is, uh, is is a little bit cold, cold. Uh, about minus five or minus three degree, uh, degrees below, uh, about three degrees below zero. But the lakes are still not covered by the ice. But as you can see on the photos, there are some uh, places with ice as well. So first of all, what's the first step of data acquisition? You need to capture uh, photogrammetry data. You can use any type of RTK drone, or you can use our equipment. For example, this lake was surveyed with a P61 camera, which was installed on the same Matrix 300, 
and we just rise drawn on 120 meters altitude and we use 61 megapixel camera why so high resolution camera to look in the water to look in the photos to look on the ortho photo to identify any objects which are inside of the water to avoid any nets of course there are some uh, the fishermen or there are some uh, uh, some uh, uh, trees which are inside of the water in the water because of the uh, snowstorm which uh, just uh, took place uh, several weeks ago and uh, first of all we prepare a mission with uh, with a photogrammetry we create orthophoto and with using of this orthophoto we are preparing mission to fly next uh, as you can see on the right side of my screen you can see the orthophoto and the area of the survey so the area of the survey is 44 hectares it's quite a huge lake uh, to make a bathymetric survey next step we use ugcs uh, mission planning software from sph engineering company and it's a great software and it has a lot of features uh, for example just to upload uh, uh, a custom digital elevation model to upload custom ortho photo and right now mission uh, this mission was prepared with using of uh, custom ortho photo which was acquired by 61 megapixel camera installed on the matrix 300 drone and we use the same matrix 300 drone for bathymetry after that but before this survey we, we we decided to show all possibilities and we make a short mission with the lidar and we use uh, did, uh, our own liner, which is produced on the basis of Vela Dyne sensor with uh, inside the uh, special uh, uh, GNSS system tightly coupled with uh, inertial measurement unit. And as a result, you will get high precision uh, terrain model over this area. And as you can see, uh, the area is, as I already said, is 44 hectares. And it, is, it, it was necessary to take just uh, five missions to cover this area. And uh, we created the distance between uh, uh, bathymetric profiles, sounding profiles with the 50 meters. And it takes, uh, it takes us uh, two and a half hour to, to accomplish these missions. We, we had uh, five sets of batteries and we made, uh, and we made uh, survey missions. And additionally, we created several cross sections to evaluate the accuracy of the survey. Why we need the cross sections? Because it's not possible to evaluate the accuracy with using any pole or with, uni, with using of, of any Genesis receiver with the depths of 10 meters or 20 meters. This lake has a depth uh, uh, of 70 meters approximately. So we need to identify the accuracy inside of the water. And what one, uh, one, uh, so, and what trouble we, we faced? And the temperature of the water the temperature of the water why because it, when we started the, uh, to make a survey it was uh, early morning and uh, the water was covered by a uh, thin level of ice and the temperature was the water was around uh, zero is around minus zero one. Huh? Minus, one, my, my, minus one or zero and uh, at the second part of the day um uh, the, the, uh, all, all all ice is dis was disappeared and after that the temperature of the water rise as and as you know uh, the accuracy of measurement of uh echo sounder depends on the uh depends on the temperature of the water we right. need to know this temperature of the water and our equipment captures the temperature of the water and saves data inside inside of the enemy uh, uh data sets and after that we use this temperature of the water for to process each measurement of a echo sounder uh what else so first of all in order to start the mission we prepare the mission in a ugcs software after that we install a base station as the base station you can use any genesis receiver or you can download rhinox files after missions from any open course network or national network. Uh, of course, you need a generator to, for your laptop to charge batteries and so on. So we use a generator and we use one laptop for mission planning. So all survey of 44 guitars just uh, took uh, less, than, uh, uh, less than three hours and we just brought all equipment in just one car. 
So you don't need to bring a huge boat. You don't need to bring any uh, any fuel and so on. Just the same DJI matrix we had it. But in the same time, we made the LiDAR survey. And in one day, we covered a huge area. And all this data is totally enough to create maps, JS, LiDARs, and, and so on. So next step. Uh, next step, we perform flights. So uh, um, all flights were made in totally on automatic mode. We prepare the mission. The, uh, the, we move the drone to the starting point of the mission. And after that, we start automatic mission. And it's totally uh, stable. It's, uh, we, are, we are totally confident uh, of the mission. Why? Because we use altimeter sensor and UGC software, which keeps the same level uh, of the flying of the drone under the water. So you don't need to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to make any changes. Just relax. But... You, you should be careful about some objects inside of the water. And this is why we ask, we, we recommend, we advise to make auto photo before, to prepare the mission, to study the area carefully, just to avoid all objects. So uh, next step. And during survey, during uh, survey, you can real feedback from uh, AquaMapper and in, uh, you can use your just, uh, uh, remote control, and you can evaluate the depth of the measurement, and you will see the profile of the uh, lake bed or sea bed uh, online. Yeah, it, it, you will see it online. And additionally, if you need to change settings of uh, echo sound, you can do through DJI Pilot application. You can change all settings of frequency. You can change uh, all settings which are very important for echo sound. And you don't need to connect any laptop, uh, any cables, no. You just run a DJI Pilot application together with the drone, connect uh, uh, Aqua Mapper to the drone, and after that, you can change all settings, what you want, what you need uh, before starting the job. I would say it's even recommended, okay, to make some kind of calibration. Yeah, okay, exactly. To run the, the system on the water, okay, uh, and also to... To decide which parameters of the game, uh, sound travel speed and uh, threshold are preferable, because in this lake, okay, uh, it was a little bit tricky. You remember? Yeah, that? it's it's it very was, it was very tricky. Area. It was thermally. Uh, yeah. It was thermally. Exactly. Exactly. The difference. Yeah, the and what does it mean thermally? When you fly with Zacco Mapper, in some uh, depths, uh, you, you couldn't receive any result. You just saw in, uh, in remote control, in DJI Pilot application, that there is no any returns from uh, echo sound. What has happened? And we spent uh, several, uh, several hours to understand what has happened. And finally, we understood that it, it looks like a thermoclean. And uh, of course, we were happy that Roman was uh, together with us. And he said, oh, guys, I think it's thermoclean because of different uh, depths and different, uh, uh, different temperature of the water inside of the lake on different, uh, uh, on different uh, depths of the lake. So, and we changed uh, the settings of AquaMapper in real time and we, process, and we continue to make a survey. So, and after the flight, uh, you just remove the AquaMapper and uh, uh, and you need to download data and you you, you can download data from uh, our equipment uh, so it's on the body of the drone so there is no any different uh, any troubles after 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 accomplishing uh, field work what you need you need to run uh, topo drone aqua maker post processing software and it allows you to put, to post process data uh genesis data gps data uh, international uh, um, uh, IMU data, it means that we capture all inclination of the sensor roll tilt. And we have two series, uh, we have two versions of AquaMeter. One, one is designed for lakes and rivers. And the second version, more advanced version, which is called the ocean version, which use high precision IMU, totally the same, which is used in our LiDAR system. So you can use it in a in the high waves, in a high level of waves, uh, waves in, in, in the sea or in the ocean. But for the lake, we use just a simple version where we have uh, tilt sensors for roll and pitch and heading. So we know all inclination of the sensor and we, we process data. So we correct the uh, inclination of the sensor. We know the uh, uh, antenna offset, of course, and we need to use the base station. And we can post-process data in any projection, projection with any type of geoid 
And as a result, you will have a real level of uh, uh, lake bottom or sea bottom or river bottom. The, you just uh, receive a number of points in the, uh, in the text format or in the last format like a point cloud, which can, you can, you can, which can be imported in any type of the software. I, I already saw some question that, is it compatible with uh, HydroMagic software? I would say, yes. You just import with uh, data like uh, 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 sounding da uh, data, like, uh, uh, like elevation data. You don't need to post-process it anymore. Just maybe to clean a little bit, to cut the rotation part of the trajectory, but uh, it's totally compatible. Or you can open it in any software with, which is compatible with last format, like uh, point cloud format. And after that, uh, you will get the lines uh, of, uh, of, of the measurement, uh, profile lines with the depths and with coordinates, and all these coordinates have the precision of several centimeters, and I will show you in real time data processing, which will be performed a little bit later. After that, we can combine this data together with orthophoto, or we can combine this data with the LIDAR, uh, LIDAR uh, results, uh, and this one is the LIDAR results, and this one is just uh, depths of this lake. And the depth of this lake was around 70 meters, I would say that. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, what I would say that we, we found a lot of uh, human objects, uh, created objects like uh, tubes, like uh, pipelines inside of this lake. So it's easy, uh, easily recognized because of the density of measurement. And what else? And after that, you can classify point cloud, lighter point cloud. You can extract uh, terrain, you can classify buildings, remove forest, everything, and combine with, uh, with the bathymetric data. As a result, you, can, you, you will be able to make pot, uh, topography survey. You will be able to create map in one day for the area around 100 or 200 hectares. And you don't need to bring a lot of people with you, just one or two people, just one pilot or one guy who is accountable uh, for data processing and to to observe and uh, to look after the drone when you fly, just to check everything. So two people will survey with, uh, up to 100 hectares or more with the bathymetric survey, and uh, it's amazing. It it it's totally changed the the way of bathymetric survey, uh, hydrologic survey, and mapping of coastal area. Uh, of shallow water. So it's uh, something amazing. It's changed my mind, really. So, and after that, uh, what you need, you know, just uh, classify point cloud uh, from the LIDAR. It takes uh, several seconds and you will get a uh, contour line and you will get a clear seabed or riverbed. What you need more, just to vectorize data in the office, uh, to vectorize buildings, uh, roads, and so on. So it's a uh, real results. What else? And here I would like to show you uh, some uh, profiles, how it is aligned. So you have a profile uh, of the terrain and you have a profile of uh, lake bed. So you can analyze it and uh, you can analyze it in any point, in any point of view. It's amazing results, really. So what else? So I would say it's my short presentation. And if you have any question, I will answer them. And after that, I can show data processing in real time if you want. If you want, of course. You words about the the angles. Okay, you mentioned that uh, it's very important to you mentioned that uh, there is also limitation for angle of row of the um, echo sounder itself. Yes, uh, because um, a lot of people think that. Uh, <laughs> echo sound waves are compatible to the LIDAR. Yes, you know this, um, uh, I don't know, the, this is the minds of all the people, yes, but it's no. It's very important, okay, to keep the, the roll angles, okay, to the limit of 15 maximum degrees in order to interpret the data correctly as possible. Exactly, Roman. And a new version of our software, we create a special filter to remove un, uh, unstable results or un, uh, how it sounds, untrustful results with a uh, huge inclination of the sensor. We, we just remove it automatically. So, and we have uh, several questions. Can we answer yep. it together? Let's go. Okay, first of all, first question. Uh, um, Roman, does the water pose 
any threats to the internal electrical components? Mm, I don't think because it's isolated. I think yeah, so. uh, exactly. So the aqua mapper is totally isolated. Everything which is inside is totally isolated, and there is no any trouble with uh, this, uh, this issue. Oh, and one of the, uh, uh, our member uh, said that uh, it's uh, where is it? It's an echo sounder. I thought it was a bathymetric lidar. Very interesting combination. Yes. Yeah, so you don't need to spend one hundred thousand and two hundred thousand dollars for bathymetric lidar. Why you don't need it? Just to combine uh, all necessary equipment like GPS, inertial measurement unit, uh, and echo sounder together, and you will get very good results with a high speed and uh, the. The level of efficiency and cost is uh, is uh, is very valuable. I, I think uncomparable to the uncomparable to with the any other system. solution right now. Uh, what is the line spacing in this data set, Roman? It's for you. What was the line spacing for mine? Spacing, yeah, for mine it was thirty meters. Thirty meters. But again, it depends on client. Yeah, you, you can clients... drive with the ten meters line spacing. You can drive. Like we here in the in like no. for, uh, 50 meters, it's up to you. In the end, it's interpreted in the client needs for the scaling. Of exactly, the exactly. Okay, one point for half, uh, for one for 500. Okay, so it's client completely client demand. Okay, of course, for for us, it's very important how many time we spend there. Yes, but uh, this project probably almost all project in Israel, uh, about the 400 dunams. Okay, or can make in one day yes and um, that's one question have you looked at the other uav platforms uh, dji is not an option for us and we are open for collaboration with other uh, developers of the platforms it's easy for us to integrate our system to any platform even it's it's open platform and uh, if it is developed by some company for us it doesn't matter we have inside the, the sdk inside of our sensor and we 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 are ready to create solution with any kind of the drone with any kind of drone. Of course, DJI is most, uh, I would say, uh, widely used in the world. And this is why we choose this carrier. And of course, DJI Care Enterprise, it, it makes a lot, it sends a lot when you can uh, get a new one drone or a published drone uh, just for $700 if you crash the drone uh, in the water. So it's a good idea. Um, another one uh, question, Orto mosaic of water body at Tricky. Do you prefer flying higher, sacrificing slightly GSD? Sacrifice. Yes, 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 exactly. And this is why we use 61 megapixel camera on our drone. This camera is designed by us and it was designed for large scale mapping to substitute aerial uh, photogrammetry. So 61 megapixel camera, just raise the drone on 200 meters or so on 300 meters if you have some permission. In this case, you will get the data with a, with a resolution of several centimeters, but uh, it will cover the whole area and you, you can stitch all images together, no problem. Yes. So it's the, be uh, the, best, uh, the best way. Uh, another one question. Uh, yes, but we use a small. Uh, also, how does the system perform in the near shore environment that are exposed to the sea? Roman, it's a question yes. for you. Or, so as we discussed, we already discussed about this issue. We are uh, thinking, okay, to 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 make some limitation to the areas about half meter, even less, okay, because the system of the SPH engineering we're using to the very shallow water. Yeah, okay, exactly, the, exactly. In the dead zone of ten centimeters, okay, so we can found and determine the the um, depth of 30 centimeters we can work with the aqua mapper it's a little bit uh tricky maybe it will be half meter a half meter working because well, we need yeah, to, exactly. exactly exactly and what i would suggest that next uh, webinar we will show some data sets from uh, from, from the sea exactly <laughs> you just read my mind <laughs> okay uh next uh, by the uh, way in the in the sea uh, project we're going to compare it also with the um, with the, the project that was done with the boat, okay, with the um, multi beam, yeah, and probably yes, it's scheduled, and then we can see the also proof for accuracy. Yeah, and another one question: If aquamapper 
hit something in water, what has happened? So uh, there are two possibilities. First of all, uh, it jumps from the water and you just raise the drone. And another one possibility, aquamapper, uh, the line between aquamapper and the drone will be destroyed because of the special uh, system of the tension. So, and you will keep the drone in, in the sky and uh, uh, you, you need to, uh, to take uh, aquamapper from, from the water. So it's uh, another step of our solution. And another one question. INS attitude is used for depth determination. Exactly. So it doesn't matter on which level of sea or uh, lake you are, uh, you perform the work. We have a GPS system here with the precision of several centimeters. We have I, uh, inertial measurement unit, which allows to uh, to remove all distortion due to the inclination of the uh, of the sensor. And as a result. The accuracy of the measurement is several centimeters, and I will show you uh, after a few minutes. Uh, is LiDAR planner in UGC is used to plan aquamapper mission? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 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 And this is the very good tool of the UGCS, and we suggest to plan the mission, especially with the aquamapper, uh, with the LiDAR tool, because in the turning, okay, you can decide exactly the bank angle, okay? And then to move very smoothly, okay? Around the turn itself. Yeah. And we are uh, suggesting also to reduce the speed, okay? During the turn to make some overshoot of few meters. Exactly. Just and to avoid the- uh, Get very shape. Yeah. Yes. shape for, uh, yeah. And uh, the final question, uh, is it, possible to use DJI Matrix 200 drone? I would say that uh, our system is compatible with DJI Matrix 200 version 2 drone. So it is compatible, but I think uh, the uh, the total weight, which is uh, which can uh, which can carry a Matrix 200 drone, is a little bit less. We need to test, but I would suggest to use Matrix 300. But also uh, uh, because this uh, question was uh, already asked, because um, the Aquamapper, okay. The drone itself is just a carrying platform. Okay. Uh, what I would suggest, we will uh, yes. we will continue talking, and I would like to show data processing. And during steps of data processing, we will explain, and maybe we will uh, share some. And if you have question, could you, uh, Roman, could you uh, could I ask uh, to to look on the questions, mm -hmm. and I I will share my screen, and uh, I will process the data. So I think it's the best way, and we don't waste uh, time of our. Uh, of our friends. Let's so let's go. Data processing. Data processing is very simple. And as you know, Topadron creates uh, Topadron post processing software for LiDAR data processing, for uh, photogrammetry data processing. And we have a lot of tools and static, a lot of tools which uh, helps all surveyors uh, uh, to process the data, to create accurate maps and so on. And all this technology was included inside of Aquamapper software. So, how it works? We need to select uh, any data which is uh, saved by uh, Aquamapper. Um, after that, we need to add the uh, GPS data which is saved by Aquamapper as well. It is automatically added. After that, we need to add the uh, antenna set. For different type of Aquamapper, for ocean edition, we have higher altitude of the antenna because of the waves, uh, but uh, for lakes, we have a shorter uh, altitude of the antenna. Next step. Next step, we need to select a base station file. As a, as a base station, you can use any type of Genesis receiver, uh, GPS receiver, Genesis receiver. It's up to you. And uh, or you can download Rhinox data from any available network. Inside of our software, there is a it's a tricky uh, moment. Uh, inside of our software, there is a tool to download uh, static data all over the world. What you need just to open. Uh, uh, just to open uh, map, select any flight uh, or any GPS data. Software will show you the, uh, your location and you can choose any available Close base station, yes. closest base station to download Rhinox data. So you, in general, you don't need to install it. Um, in some cases, if you don't have your own GPS receiver, it's better to install, uh, uh, to use our system to download open uh, Rhinox data, open static data. But right now we install a base station, as you remember, I show you, uh, I showed you some uh, photos of the base station, which was installed on the, uh, on the lake bank. 
And after that, what, what else? Uh, base station use uh, core, uh, and we need to assign precise coordinates of the base station. And after that, it is possible to use uh, uh, temperature of the water from in your file. And for each measurement, we capture uh, uh, not only angles of acquisition, but the uh, 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 water temperature. Or you can set up a uh, uh, medium level of temperature for, for all eight. But this survey was very tricky because uh, during the day, the temperature of the water was changing in, uh, up to five gradus, really. And in this case, uh, on the on the on the on the on the surface of the water, so it was a little bit tricky, and this is why we use. Uh, it's a lake, yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's lake. a lake. And uh, if you if you make if you are going to make survey in uh, salty water, in this case, you can add a uh, uh, parameter of uh, of uh, uh, salinity of the water, so to uh, to correct the depths. What else? And this. And uh, it is possible to post-process all flights together what uh, you made uh, during the day. So we made five flights and what we need just to add in the files uh, and all necessary data will be uploaded uh, to, to this flight for data processing. And we need to add more and more data sets. Uh, I will add five data sets, five flights. And data processing is very simple. It's just one, two, three and nothing else. And um, uh, what else? Uh, what to do, Roman? While I'm editing uh, five flights, could you could you share your experience or tell something interesting to our client? Just a minute. We have one question about the accuracy. Okay, let's uh, about the accuracy. It's around a few centimeters. So we check the accuracy. We did few. A few GCP points in the different area. So the accuracy we're getting about the three, sometimes five, five centimeters. centimeters. Definitely, definitely. In C, we did um, some also um, observation of the accuracy in the comparison to the multi beam, okay, with the previous model of the UGCS so that probably used the same sensor, okay. Uh, and the difference between the data collected by the boats with multi beam and our data was uh, in the C seven centimeters. Okay, so it's uh, mean that accuracy of this model, okay, the Korean model, it's very good. Okay, so okay, so I just upload five flights uh, to one uh, batch processing option, and uh, on the software you will find the base station position. We just download Rhinox data from. Uh, uh, virtual Rhinox data for for the, uh, for the central point of the lake. It just generated from several uh, base stations, and uh, we uh, we can see starting point of our flight here. And after that, we start data processing. In few seconds, uh, software will post process data, and uh, you will get uh, you will get a real feedback about accuracy during processing it. It looks totally the same like with all our PPK post processing. It looks like totally the same like uh, LIDAR post processing. You will get the results for five flights. And after that, after post processing, you will get a, a real depth of the, of the lake. And uh, you can upload to any software like HydroMagic or LIDAR 360 to generate digital elevation model to add some boundaries and so on to process it. But you don't need to make any corrections. What you need just to maybe clean. Why? Because during this flight, we will share video of this uh, project uh, in our YouTube channel. You will see that, that in some cases, our sensor just destroy a, a, a thin level of ice because of the uh, it, it was a it was a thin level of ice, and our sensor just destroy it. And as a result, in this case, uh, some measurement was not were not correct. You understand right. that, uh, yeah, because of the uh, of this idea. So, and during post processing, uh, uh, you will see uh, post processing in real time. First flight is made, the second flight, and we will process more and more data. In a few minutes, we will get results. And while we are processing, I will show you all all results of data processing. I would like to show what we will. Okay. Uh, as a result, we will have lines which are processed by our software. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, uh, several cross sections. And with these several cross sections, we can identify the accuracy of the measurement. We can identify 
accuracy of the measurement unit because we have a cross section and we can check the accuracy between several lines in different directions. For example, here we we, uh, we have a line. And what what I would like to say more, uh, what is important uh, after before post processing. Uh, after post processing, we just cut all uh, turning parts of trajectory because it's not so accurate, and it's better to to remove it because of the huge inclination of, of the sensor and echo sounder doesn't work uh, well with uh, inclination with more than uh, thirty degrees. And uh, but uh, this one it's aligned, and after that we can check uh, cross section of these lines uh, and what we will get in, in, as a result. Uh, so we have uh, two uh, two points, and we check the altitude between points. Uh, one uh, point is uh, uh, seven y five zero, and the second point is uh, uh, seven y five two one. So let's check another one point, and uh, we will see the result as well. So. Uh, Plus this methodic it's probably also required by our clients in Israel. Yes. Yeah. Every time we need to do the control line. Yeah, the control line to, to estimate the accuracy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, the, and so. uh, can look. So we have a point. Uh, so we have altitude seven. Uh, the depths uh, seven one point two point nine nine, and the second measurement uh, which is from another one line and just. Three centimeter difference. So from different directions in automatic mode, we get three centimeter accuracy. Three centimeter accuracy, and of course, and we have some troubles with uh, different uh, water uh, water temperature, and it influences more. But because of the data processing, because of automatic correction of the temperature of the water, we can achieve such accuracy. So and for all lines, we can evaluate the accuracy, and we can check uh, what we have. What we have. Uh, uh, just, uh, just I don't know, maybe this line as well. So here we have uh, one line and uh, the uh, the le uh, level uh, nine eight nine eight. Uh, it, me it means uh, ni ninety eight centimeters. And here we have 92 centimeters. So the difference in uh, in six centimeters in uh, in, uh, in 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 depth in this position. So what else? What else? So after that, as soon as we create such a data set, we we are able to create uh, uh, we're able to uh, to sorry 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 sorry. It's still processing the final data set. Uh, we're able to create. Uh, uh, Digital elevation model of the bottom, and after that we can add uh, a point cloud, lidar point cloud, and we can classify lidar point cloud as well uh, to different objects, and we can keep just only uh, terrain level trees and buildings, or we can we can exclude trees and buildings, just keep uh, only terrain level. And this one, it's a terrain level. And uh, what else? It's a terrain level. And of course, we can create uh, uh, contour lines. We can create contour lines, or we are able to create a cross section of this area, uh, including uh, including uh, all objects and so on. So I will create a cross section right now. And you can see uh, terrain and uh, lake bed. So it's amazing. So you, you are creating a three-dimensional model of all objects, even under the water. It's amazing. with using of one, one drone. And after data processing, uh, just, uh, just uh, and uh, right now data processing is finished. And we received the position and this line, probably, these lines. This line, probably we hit the... The the ice, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly, 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 exactly. So we hit. Uh, so in some cases, we hit. Uh, we hit um, uh, um, um, ice as well. So what we have? We have a uh, forty-four, uh, for, uh, forty-four hectares of lake, which was covered in uh, two uh, in uh, in uh, two and a half hours. 
which was covered by our equipment together with uh, DJI Matrix 3 uh, Matrix 300 drone, together with P61 camera to to get orthophoto and with the padron lidar system. And in one day, you capture a huge area, and you capture it by se uh, several people. Uh, I would say that it is amazing advantage and efficiency. I, I, I would not accessible such efficiency was not accessible uh, for any private surveyor company, any huge hydrologic company uh, one year ago or several months ago. And you just need to invest to uh, not so expensive drone, LiDAR system, camera, and uh, uh, aqua mapper. So it's what, what you need for topography and for uh, mapping in any areas what you want. And you can bring it in your car. And this is the probably what people uh, I, I feel like uh, uh, during the, my conversation with the potential client, it's really create for them some, some um, I don't know, feeling of suspicion. You, you know, they, they really create some distortion that with uh, probably small amount, okay, of, of uh, investment, investment uh, yeah. you can create the product, product the like same, a huge company, the same like, expensive box. Yes. It's also important to, to mention that, of course, also in this slide of 316, you can see since we're talking about the single beam, okay, we have the problem with the meanwhile with the, uh, also some vegetation exactly at the bottom, and exactly. you can see it uh, also clearly, yes, yeah. because normally if you can interpret this data, also to take this data also to the uh, hydromagic, okay, and then to clean the echo. Some other yeah, exactly, and you need to know how to clean the data, but data processing is very simple. Before, I am a surveyor with 20 years of experience, and I, 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 I made a lot of mapping and with the drone, with the total station, with the LiDAR and so on. But uh, in, in my uh, previous company, there were a special department of bathymetry survey. It was around 10 or 20 people with the huge equipment bots, uh, some kind of uh, special software, very expensive special software. It was like a uh, closed, uh, so, uh, closed uh, team. Uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was not an original uh, mapping team. No, it's just bathymetry team, it's very expensive. And now I understand that my dream is realized. Right now, I am able to make a survey everywhere, just taking everything in small boxes with not so expensive software, which is very easy to understand and to process. And of course, uh, this is the aim of our software as well. So as you can see, data processing is very simple. You don't need to have a special knowledge. It's not a rocket science. It's just uh, data processing, totally like the same, like our lighter data, like photogrammetry. And if you already use our equipment, it takes you maybe several hours to understand how it works. The main uh, the main important part is the training in the field team. Uh, yes. Yeah, in, uh, for for field box, how, how uh, uh, for pilot. I think the main advantage because it's a little bit tricky to fly on a low altitude or under the water, but with using of altimeter sensor, automatic mission planning, you don't need to drive the drone uh, manually. It's, it's totally automatic and. Uh, be be patient, uh, uh, be calm, and uh, everything will be okay. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, if we have any questions, we will answer. And after that, uh, we will stop our, our conference and uh, yes. we will share this conference to you. Uh, what questions do you have? Let's go to the first one. Okay. I okay. First that, of all, that... accuracy. What was it? Already. So I would say that in three, five centimeters, sometimes because of the uh, difference in the temperature for echo sound, it will be six or seven centimeters. And of course, there is an inclination. So I would say it's totally automatic. Uh, another one question. Does the MU only record the angular axis of the sensor? Does it record the position of the data depending on the angle of record? Yes, of course, our software corrects all uh, uh, inside of our software during post-processing, we correct all inclination of the sensor. We record everything. And after that, we use all information like GPS position, angles of acquisition, echo sounder data, um, um, uh, temperature of the water to, uh, to correct all distortion. And only after data processing, 
you will get a real uh, real uh, position of the of the echo, uh, echo sounding data. I would say the the software it's uh, really um, saving a lot of time. Okay, that takes for the professional hydrologist guy. Okay, uh, to collect this data and to to output the the final result with the, include the correction of the of special correction that's supposed to be done okay there are um, so yeah. many interesting questions Roman is there a mechanical stabilization in order to reduce angle into the sensor as I already said we have a specially design which we we spent three months to design a special uh, streamlined shape of the sensor and because of this the sensor moves without any distortion of the water in the high speed so we don't need to use any gimbal. The previous our solution was to use the gimbal, but now it's not necessary. It looks like a torpedo which uh, point is uh, let's, to let's say the truth. It's yeah, not inspired by the torpedo. So okay, yeah, exactly, the, 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 exactly, because exactly. the <laughs> yeah. So it, it looks like a torpedo. To, to, yeah. to, to stay stable, stable, a stable and the it's, drone it's so, Yes, the, the data will be the great. So for our purpose, we need to add another floater near no the problem. aquamapper. Is it possible to add it next to the aquamapper? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, but it, it should be discussed. We need to uh, process all shape together to avoid any uh, how it sounds water bulbs, uh, yeah, the water stream, and water stream. To, to see the yeah. yeah. complicated and tricky question, but uh, it can be uh, realized. Is there a plan to do all frequency? Yes. yes, of course. It's a good question. Uh, what else? How is GCP, uh, GCP used in water to check in accuracy? So, if you have any kind of uh, uh, G, uh, uh, pole, you can measure some points in the shallow water up to. I think uh, uh, next uh, next webinar we will show how we measure uh, checkpoints in the sea, uh, where uh, hopefully it was a hot weather, so we measure a lot of checkpoints in the sea. And after that, it was used for to check the accuracy. But you don't need this. You don't need to use this GCPs to improve the data. The data is always correct because of the data processing. But you 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 mentioned some uh, new model, yes, for the for GCP measurements. Uh, yeah, you are uh, talking about maybe yes, it's uh, one. Yeah, and what else? And. Um, uh, Supports of orthometric heights, yes. uh, various enjoyed. Yes, our software supports any type of ellipsoid, geoids, geoids. ellipsoid, geoids, and so on. So it is. It was included in our lidar survey. It was. In, uh, it was included in our lidar survey. Um, you some special geoid. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have a lot of experience uh, experience uh, from our lidar data processing and uh, and photogrammetric processing everything is included even you can add your own projection you can add your own joint or even you can add your own coordinate system it's up to you it's everything is is, uh, is possible in our software since it's single beam what is required of the collected data of for it to get a quality in the direction of multi-beam uh, to increase number of uh, to increase number of lines you, you need to uh to uh to increase number one uh okay how many questions about processing is it possible to know the altitude of the water yes of course it's easy it's easy you can it's cross check it's cross check probably we can do it with the lighter yeah. okay in the photogrammetry and to yeah to make some um what line spacing is the data we already answered this question just uh, close this question thank you it was very informative Thank you for joining us and thank you Roman for joining us and to, for coming to Switzerland. Hopefully uh, we have a skin this, uh, with this this weekend. What yeah, do you think? Yeah. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> thank you. Thank guys. you. Thank you guys. Bye bye. See you on the next webinar in Israel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>